Welcome to Knowledge 3, Lesson 3. This story is Billy Begg. Once upon a time, there was an Irish prince whose name was Billy Begg. Though born the son of a king, Billy didn't live the usual life of a prince. Billy worked in the fields herding cattle every day from sun up till sundown. Billy spent so much time with the cattle that his best friend was the oldest bull in the herd, one with a speckled hide and a white face. Billy was very fond of the bull, and the bull was just as fond of him. One day, the old bull was sent to the market in town to be sold. When Billy heard this, he was very sad. But the bull said, Don't worry, Billy, my boy. You'll be all right without me. In the grove behind the barn, there are three gifts for you. A magic tablecloth, a stick, and a belt made from the hide of my grandfather. If you unfold the tablecloth, you'll never be hungry. If you wave the stick three times round your head, you'll have the strength of a thousand men. And if you wrap the belt around your waist, no enemy will be able to defeat you. With that, the bull left bravely for the market. At first, Billy Begg was too upset to do anything without his friend. He cried for three days and three nights. Then Billy remembered what the bull had said. When the sun rose the next morning, he went to the grove behind the barn and pulled out the tablecloth from beneath the tree. When he unfolded it, he found it was covered with delicious food and drink. Billy ate and drank until his stomach was full. Next, he grabbed the stick and the belt that the bull had left for him. Then he set off to make his way in the world. He walked on till he came to a fine old house. He knocked and an old gentleman came to the door. Excuse me, said Billy. I was wondering if you have any work. As a matter of fact, said the old gentleman, I do need someone to watch over my cows, pigs, donkeys, and goats, but... Well, I'm the best shepherd you'll ever see, Billy interrupted. Well, said the old gentleman, that may be. But a giant has moved into the forest next to my pasture. That beast has scared off the last three boys I hired. Well, I'm not afraid of him, said Billy. If you'll have me, I'll take the job. So the old gentleman hired Billy to watch his cows, pigs, donkeys, and goats. The next day, Billy led the animals out to pasture and sat down on a rock. Later that day, a horrible, one-eyed giant suddenly appeared from the rocks. Oh, said the giant, licking his lips. Here is a tasty little treat. You're too big for one bite, but not big enough for two. What should I do with a tiny morsel like you? Billy fastened on his belt and grabbed his stick. He swung the stick above his head three times to give himself the strength of a thousand men. It was a terrible fight. But finally, Billy swung the stick and thwack! sent the monstrous giant flying off the cliff and into the sea. When the old gentleman heard that Billy had driven away the giant, he patted him on the back and told him, You're a fine boy. I'll double your wages. So Billy became a herdsman. He kept watch over the old gentleman's animals and served him well. Then one day... The old gentleman came out of the house and yelled to his coachman, Get the carriage! Saddle up the horses! I'm going to town! What's the occasion? said Billy. Haven't you heard? the old gentleman asked. Billy shook his head. A terrible dragon is in the village, explained the old gentleman. The dragon has demanded the king's own daughter as the princess, as his prisoner. 
The dragon said it forcefully. Unless the king's champion fighter can defeat the dragon, the poor girl's as good as gone. Oh, said Billy, concerned. The poor princess. The old gentleman got into his carriage and sped off to the city. Lots of other people came on horseback in carriages and wheelbarrows. Billy decided that he'd go and fight the terrible dragon if he had to. Billy dressed himself in an old suit of armor that belonged to his master and then buckled his special belt securely around his middle. When he was dressed, Billy slipped on his boots, grabbed his magic stick, went to the stable where he mounted the brown mare and rode bravely into town. Thousands of people had come to see the king's champion face the dragon. Billy saw the champion in the center of the crowd, pacing up and down, back and forth, dragging his heavy sword behind him. Next, he caught a glimpse of the princess, gathered with her maidens at the front of the crowd. She was certainly beautiful, but looking just a little bit nervous. Just then, there was a fearsome roar. The dragon rose up out of the sea. He had fiery eyes with smoke billowing out of his nostrils and giant flames pouring out of his mouth. The king's champion turned white with fear. He dropped his sword and ran away. When the princess saw that the champion had fled, she began wringing her hands, crying, Oh, please, she called out. Won't someone save me? At first, no one made a sound. Then Billy Begg stepped out of the crowd. He wore his borrowed suit of armor. The helmet and visor were just big enough to completely cover his face, so nobody knew who he was, not even the old gentleman. I will fight the dragon, Billy said. The princess and the people all stared with wide eyes. The dragon charged at Billy, shooting fire from his mouth. Billy ducked to stay away from the flames. Then he swung his stick three times round his head. It was a terrible fight. But in the end, Billy Begg defeated the dragon. There was great shouting and applause. The princess ran up to thank the mysterious knight, but Billy Begg mounted his horse to ride away. The princess reached out to stop him, but as his horse galloped away, she could only grab hold of one of his boots, which slipped right off his foot. Billy Begg ran back to the old gentleman's farm. He took off the suit of armor, put the mare back in the stable, and tossed his other boot into the haystack in the barn. When his master came back the next day, he told Billy everything that had happened. Isn't that amazing, said the old gentleman. I should say so, said Billy. The next day, the king ordered his men to find the brave knight who had saved his daughter's life. The king's men went from house to house, trying to find the man whose foot fit the boot the princess was left holding. It took several weeks for them to make their way out to the old gentleman's farm. The king's men had all the servants try on the boot. The coachman stuffed his big foot into the boot, scrunching up his toes to make it fit, and the cook put on his heaviest wool socks to try to fill the boot. No one thought much of Billy Begg. But when he slipped his foot into the boot, they all saw that it fit him as well as his own skin. What's this? asked one of the men. Is this your boot? It is, said Billy. I have the other one just like it out in the barn. Then the men knew that Billy was the one who had slayed the dragon. They put a velvet suit on him and hung a gold chain round his neck. Then they took him to the village where he married the princess and became the prince of that place. <laughs>